Hello, and welcome to today's Quick Plays video on completing from the small blind. Many players complete with incorrect ranges from the small blind, which ends up creating really tough spots and ultimately extra loss. In this video, we'll discuss common mistakes, explain why they are mistakes, and then create a profitable range to complete with. First, what is completing? This is when the small blind just calls the big blind rather than raising or folding. A completion can be done after there are 1, 3, or even 0 limpers, but this shouldn't be confused with calling a preflop raise from the small blind. That's a totally different topic that we'll tackle in a separate video. The mistake that many players make is simply completing with too many hands. For instance, take this example where there are 3 limpers to us in a live 1-2 game. If you'd like, pause the video now and write down the range you'd complete with here. In my coaching experience, I notice that players tell me one range, but actually complete with many more hands. Especially in live games, when their boredom levels are high, their completion range gets really wide. They may tell me they only complete suited connectors, but in real time they also complete with 8-7 off and 10-9 off. They may say they only complete suited aces, but in real time they also complete king-6 suited. Do you do the same thing? First, why is it a mistake to complete with so many hands? To understand that, let's look at the three major hand types that I feel people complete with incorrectly. They are suited kings, suited broadway gappers, and unsuited connectors. When I say a suited king, I don't mean ace-king suited or king-jack suited. I mean like king-eight suited or king-four suited. The weak suited king that doesn't perform particularly well. If we run a hand like king-six suited through Flopzilla, we see the following. 18% top pair better, 15% middle pair, and 11% of flush draws. The issue is that if we complete with king-six suited here, we're going to see a 5-way flop out of position. Playing draws out of position is going to be very tough, playing middle pair out of position is going to be very tough, and even top pair is going to be a bit tricky. Say the flop comes king 7-5. What's the plan? If you bet and get one caller, do you expect to win that pot often? If you bet and get two or more callers, do you expect to win that pot often? Even if you get just one caller and have the best hand most of the time, are you prepared to play two more streets out of position with top pair and no kicker? We notice that when we think ahead, the situation becomes less ideal and that we are really just hoping to smash the flop or get involved in an easy drawing situation. But even when drawing, it's tough to play draws out of position, tough to maximize value the times we do hit the draw, and there could easily be reverse implied odds against a higher flush since people love to limp in with suited ace-x hands. The same concept carries over to suited broadway gappers, like queen-8 suited, jack-8 suited, king-9 suited, etc. Many players complete these from the small blind because the hands can flop lots of draws in some top pairs. But if we look at queen-8 suited and flopzilla, we see it flops 19% top pair better, 15% middle to weak pair, and 11% of flush draws. Now we're going to have a similar issue with top pair as we did with king-6. Our top pair hands are going to have kicker issues. And when we hit top pair with the low card in our hand, the texture is going to change considerably by the river. Drawing hands are also going to be tricky, and there will be more and more reverse implied odds as our top card gets lower and lower. The other thing to consider is how we smash boards. If we have a hand like queen-8 suited and we smash on a queen-8-5 board, there are lots of cards that can come and change the texture. If we have queen-8 suited and smash on a board of jack-10-9, the texture is super wet and it's tough to maximize value being out of position. And when we have queen-8 suited and the flop is 3 of our suit, we still have to dodge the 4th flush card and hope we get paid off on such an obvious board, all while hoping that we don't run into an already higher flush. I say this, and I know it sounds very pessimistic. And some people will say, but with 3 limpers, how can't we complete here getting such a sick price? Sure, we're getting 9 to 1 on a call given the immediate pot odds. But the issue is that in no limit and pot limit games, it's easy for the pot size to get out of control. So when you're in a reverse implied odds situation, it can get very costly very quickly. The other hand type that I suggest taking out of your small blind completion range is offsuit connectors like 9-8 off and 5-4 off. The hands have very little single pair value, and flopping two pair creates an immediate issue. Say you have 7-6 off and the flop is 7-6x. Regardless of what the X is, there's at least one draw present, if not two with a flush draw. Plus the runoff can get ugly quickly, leaving us confused when we're supposed to build a huge pot with two pair and when we're in more of a showdown value mindset. And then there's that issue of trying to play draws from out of position again. When I look at the real range that many people complete with, it looks to be something like 33% of hands. However, I would suggest using something closer to 14%. 
My normal completion range against one or more limpers is going to include suited ASEX hands, pairs that aren't worth a raise, Broadway hands that aren't worth a raise, and suited connectors. Now many of these hands can be tricky to play postflop, especially out of position, but with strong postflop skills they become easier. And for what it's worth, I pretty much never complete from the small blind if it folds around to me. As a default, I'm going to steal or fold in that spot. Now yes, 8-7 suited is going to have some of the issues that 8-7 off did. Like that catching 2 pair with 8-7 means that the board is inherently more draw heavy. But overall, the hand is going to perform better, especially if you are comfortable drawing out of position. Understand your own strengths, and if you don't feel very strong playing jack-10 off from here, go ahead and fold it preflop. Better to just get rid of it early than play it and start spewing postflop. Just keep working on your postflop skills and add or delete hands where appropriate. Overall, many players would fare much better by deleting some of the hands they complete with from the small blind. By doing this, they strengthen their range, create better spots, and exit possible reverse implied odd situations early. It should also be noted that the 14% range I suggested hits top pair better and draws 10% more often than the 33% range, which is nothing to sneeze at. But regardless of the range you decide to complete with, just make sure you are working on your postflop skills and using logic to decide if that completion is really worthwhile. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck out there, and happy grinding.